Welcome to District Dialogue, Commissioner Mitchell. And yes, I know you're wondering what this thingamajigam that I got, <laughs> I got here, it's called a drone. Now today on District Dialogue, you're gonna find that we're talking all about the Highway 92 bypass project, where it starts from. So let me do this here first. Let me take the drone and, and kind of get it up in the air and this whole mechanism you're gonna see. Wow, okay. Now you can see above me, as we take the drone all the way through the project, the project starts from Nebo Road. From Nebo Road going south of 92, that runs all the way through Douglasville, the city of Douglasville. Then it'll cross under the railroad tracks. Then it'll go from that point all the way to I-20. So it's a nice little route, as you can see from my drone. And I know it may be a little shaky, but you can understand what it looks like. This is gonna be a great conversation that we're gonna have about the Highway 92 bypass project. I'll talk with the many of the city officials. I'll also talk with uh, Marsha Hampton, who is the city manager and the director of, uh, transportation, Michelle Wright. This is gonna be interesting. You're gonna find out where it starts and where it will end and how we will get this traffic through the city of Douglasville and you'll understand just about how much it costs and a whole lot of other great things. So stick around. I'm gonna to try to land this thing. Now hold on here. Let me see, can I get it back on the ground? Whew. All right, good. Now let's go over here and talk to a couple of the city officials and have some fun to talk about this Highway 92 bypass. Come join me. Now here on the right of way, I guess I'll call that, of the Highway 92 bypass project that has been talked about for many years. So we're gonna talk about the history of the 92 bypass and all the great things that are gonna happen when this road is on the way and kind of all this construction and all this kind of crazy is all done. With me today, I've got a couple of guests, and I'm gonna let these guys introduce themselves so they can tell you more about their involvement with the Highway 92 bypass and kind of what their, their roles are at the city government. So let's start with Michelle. I'm Michelle Wright with the city of Douglasville. I'm their planning director, and I work on transportation for the city. And, and what's your title though? Because I know I always get these titles all mixed up. Yeah. Planning director. Planning director, okay, so you know, I'll keep that in mind. I'm Marsha Hampton, city manager for the city of Douglasville. And what, what is it that you do? <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't laugh because, you know, it depends on the day, Commissioner. Um, I manage the operations for the city, work with the city council and the staff. Right, right. Yes. So, so with that, understand, we're going to talk about this Highway 92 bypass project. So let's start with a couple of great questions because everybody's talking about, like, where does this project kind of start? Now, from my understanding, it started at Nebo Road. Uh, 92 coming all the way in to Douglasville. I did a little drone move and I just want to make sure that for verification, can you verify what that, that whole makeup is? Okay. There's actually four phases of the project. Okay. Phase one is the railroad underpass. Mm -hmm. Phase two is from Fairburn Road up to the railroad, Bankhead Highway. And then phase three is from Bankhead Highway along the uh, Brown Street route up to Malone. And then phase four is Malone in Douglas County up to Nebo Road in Pauling County. Wow. Now, in linear mileage, and I don't, you know, I'd like I know something here now, in linear mileage, what is that? How many, because I know this became a regional project, so what is that so we can get an idea of from Nebo Road to the, when it makes its way all the way to uh, I-20? Um, our segment of it is 3.10 miles. The Nebo Road segment, I'm not quite sure, but I believe it's a couple of miles, two okay, or three okay. miles. Okay. So, so, so talk about, Marsha, so you can join in on this conversation. Talk about this whole project when it became a, a regional project, when at one time, the city of Douglasville, when I was on council, it was all about just the city wanted to get these guys across the tracks from the north side. Talk about from the regional perspective when it became that. Yeah, and, and I think, um, Commissioner Mitchell, when you were on city council, the project actually even probably predated your tenure, that it started out with Mayor Camp's administration. Uh -huh. um, and when you guys were there, you actually worked hard with um, some of our federal delegation by going to Washington, D.C. with the right. Chamber of Commerce, trying to secure dollars to get the project moving. Um, by the time I came aboard uh, with the city, and or, or I should say, got involved with the project. Uh, the city had already spent over $2 million on uh, preliminary engineering. Uh, we were still trying to push the Georgia Department of Transportation to move this project to regional status. And uh, we basically were approached by GDOT and said, hey, um, we'll look at you all to do this, but um, what you have to do is revisit your environmental phase of the project. So Because that kept changing. It did, yes. it, it yes. did. So they told us, they gave us a, um, 
uh, basically a date of November of, I want to say it was 2009, that basically our FONSI date, our finding of no significant impact through the environmental process, and that was back in March. So we had less than nine months to do the environmental process, which is very tough. Um, we had a series of about 12 town hall meetings to cover not only just the north side community but all demographics that would be impacted by the community including the mill village including uh, our hispanic and latin population yes. as well as our businesses yes um so because there were there were a few i don't mean to interrupt no, you no, there, no, but no, there, sir. there were a few businesses that uh had to be uh removed to, to make way for the project yes, there were a couple of communities that were affected yes, i mean housing and and that kind of stuff so yeah, so we, we met with all of those individuals over a course of six weeks. We had several town hall meetings yes. um, throughout the week. Um, we turned that information in. It got to Federal Highway, and then we did actually receive um, notice that we could move forward. Um, we adopted a mitigation plan uh, that was passed forth by GDOT. Um, at that point, once the community development piece was um, handled and taken care of, I kind of stepped out of the way. Ms. Wright, as planning director, took over once GDOT officially accepted the project as a GDOT and a transportation and um, a transportation project for GDOT. And the city could say, Right. We're done. Well, well, well the, the, the reasoning for that was so that the so our viewers from District Dialogue can understand that the city wasn't uh, financially stable enough to kind of take on a ownership of a project of, of this large, of this magnitude, because the dollars and cents were as high as 100 plus million dollars to complete the project, correct? Correct. It was the total cost for the project is $111 million. Yes. The construction is $59 million. Got it. And, 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 and I guess we felt like when I was a mayor pro tem and, and with Mickey Thompson and myself, we kind of felt like we couldn't take over this, pro take ownership of this project solely right. to kind of run it through the city and get us across the tracks at this any given time. So with that, we decided kind of let's pass this project on to GDOT. Um, even though it became a regional project and with the help of Congressman Scott, who kind of found federal dollars, and you want to give us those numbers? Um, Congressman Scott helped us to get $93 million in federal money. Wow. Wow. And in one of those town hall meetings that we had was actually one initiated by Congressman Scott. It was yes. August 6th of that year, um, and it kind of kicked off the project. Actually, his staff was very involved yes. in a lot of our team meetings that we have. He's still involved to this day, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> making certain that the money is spent yes. for the project. Yes. Um, so that initial push when you all went to um, Washington, D.C., it kind of stayed um, at that level. And, and, you know, to Michelle's point and even to your point, sometimes folks don't necessarily understand that we, the city, can't receive those monies from the federal government. So that money goes to the state departments of transportation. So from the state, it went from the federal, it went to uh, GDOT. Okay, and then GDOT kind of funneled it that way to us to kind of make the project what it is and pass it on to them uh, to kind of complete the project, I would assume. Am I saying that right? Is that the correct process? That's correct. That is correct. Okay, so, so now, with that being said, you know, they talk about this underpath that is going to happen. What, where are we with that whole makeup? Everybody's asking, you know, not only, and we'll get into when we're gonna be done and hopefully riding on this nice, I don't know how many lanes that we're gonna be dealing with. When six we, lanes. Six lanes. And when we're gonna get to that underpath and get that kind of completed? Well, the underpass is gonna, um, right now they just started moving the railroad tracks over. Okay. Um, we did have uh, a few other things that we had to do that delayed it, which was, we had to put in a retaining wall and to get those plans approved by the railroad, Norfolk Southern Railroad. So right now they're just starting to move the uh, railroad tracks over. Got it. So they're moving the railroad tracks over, completed. Now, I, I mean, maybe I'm just a little slow with this. How would that, that process, how would that, that will all come together? They'll, they'll bring in the tunnel or <laughs> is it... Is it they just drive a train through and it's done? A little dynamite. Hey, hey. So what, what, is, what, what is that? What is that really? Uh, well, basically, they have to move the railroad over so, so that the railroad can have a stability to, to still operate. Then they work on one half of it, mm -hmm. and then they move the tracks back over. Mm -hmm. So you will have an underpass under the railroad. So how difficult, maybe not difficult, was it dealing with Norfolk. Now, I know I was on the council during that time. It, it wasn't, uh, it, was, it was a unique moment, but we got through it. But how, how you remember those days and those times going, dealing with, with Norfolk, and even now, because, I mean, they're still in the picture, because they could slow down the project or 
could create some unique moments for us with the project. I would say on the from the uh, with the community piece, and Michelle can speak to the the piece now. Um, I think there were some complicated conversations early on, but as we work through the process, um, I would say it wasn't really that difficult. I, the key to having the relationship with Norfolk Southern was having them at the table yes. and constant conversation yes. and explaining to them exactly what it is that we wanted to do. Um, you know, there were certain things that we requested that Norfolk Southern said, um, well, I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, how about you guys look at this? Right. But overall, at the end of the day, the city was going to have to be responsible for covering the cost of whatever that was we were going to do. So that typically uh, narrowed down the scope uh, of yes. certain things. I know, you know, there were pedestrian bridges, certain right. pedestrian crossings, yes. certain upgrades to crossings. Certain all closings. Of that, correct. All of that was going to be us, yes. on us. And yes, closings were not, uh, they were all dictated by Norfolk Southern. But as you recall, many of the closings that we had, we were able to keep an opening in downtown, which yes. it was not slated in the beginning to keep that opening. So help me re refresh my memory. There's only two closings that will be closing, like the 92 and the other one further, would that be west? Or what was the, there's, one, there's one other closing that Norfolk asked that we, uh, as a city, close. Well, actually, we're going to be closing the, uh, the State Route 92 at Campbellton. Okay. And then the Mosley Street, which is a little bit to the east. Okay and uh, we'll be opening the new underpass, which is a little bit more east of that. That's correct. But we also have a McCarley Street crossing, but it, it actually be closed, but it's actually gonna be moved down about 100 feet and be widened to be like our major crossing in the downtown area. Okay, okay, got you. Okay, well good. So why don't we do this here though? I mean, this is a great start of uh, where it begins. It'll actually begin right here where we're actually standing. It actually begins at, uh, which is phase four at Nebo. But let's go to the under the underpath where this thing will go under and let's have some conversations there. Is that okay? Okay, so come on you guys, let's, let's make a walk down here. We'll take a walk down here and uh, get to the, uh, the next stop, which will be the underpath. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, now, so we're here. This is kind of where the underpath and where everything will be going under uh, the, 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 the uh, railroad tracks. So Michelle, talk about that again and bring our viewers up to snuff as to what that will be like. What, 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 what's going on here, basically? Well, this is where the, um, you're gonna have the underpass for the railroad. Right now, they're moving the railroad tracks over and then they'll, they'll start working on half of it and then they'll move the railroad tracks back over and finish it. And Got this it. will be a, a, a separated grading for a safety issue for the city of Douglasville. Right. And, and this was the main, the main reason for this was trying to get us across the track, correct? Yes. So in getting across the track, this was very important to those citizens on the north side, getting across the track when the train is coming, stop, whatever that is, correct? And so, also for the school buses. And the school buses and the, uh, the freight and all the other stuff that comes this way. So let, let's take a look here though. So let's look back here. This is, it, it kind of, we started back in, on the Nebo Road side of things and we came all the way down 92. Uh, would that be south of 92? Yes, it would be south okay, of right. 92. You know, I'm not good at that. So, <laughs> so south of 92, then we made that left turn on the Brown Street. And, and we're now, this is considered the new Brown Street, I guess. Yes, it is. Wow, wow. Okay, okay. And then we go to the underpath which that's what we just spoke of now. Mm -hmm. And from that point, what happens next? Where are we going next? Well, then after that, the, you go under the railroad tracks and you go across Bankhead Highway and you go down towards Hospital Drive. Okay. And at Hospital Drive, it splits um, people that need to get to the courthouse. What was and there the before mall. The, the, the Hospital Drive? Wasn't like the, the Big Lots, I think, was there? Or help me out. What, what, what yeah. was the, in that Big one? Lots was there okay. and it's been removed. Uh -huh. Or you could go um, south to Fairburn Road at I-20. Got it. So this basically is a more direct route to places that, that people want to go, which is I-20, the mall, uh, the Douglas County Courthouse. Yes, yes. Now, the big question I've been asked a couple of times, the CVS is there, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we got the checkers that's there. Right. Are they both staying or, or something is going? I know the CVS, if I'm not mistaken, is-, is the, They are staying. Okay. Um, okay. If, you, if you've noticed, some of their property um, has been taken. Actually, okay. um, viewers can go right now. You can see near where the bus barn 
Okay. It's located. Yes. Yes. You can see yes. they, they're clear, clearing that out. Okay. So there's actually um, the road has been um, paved to a certain point um, near East Side, Burnett Elementary School. So you really can see a clear view if you're standing in the parking lot um, at the CVS and the Checkers and now so, on so Fairburn Road. Those pieces of property, that, that those projects will stay. Uh, with the once we are done with the whole project, the phase one, two, three, and four, that will that will hang around. They will almost sit almost in a triangle. Wow! Because I always thought that the CVS would remain, but not the not the checkers. But so the checkers kind of cut its way, made its way into this whole makeup as well. As as far as I know, unless okay. they decide to leave currently right now, that property um, uh, would not affect the new roadway. Wow! Because I always thought that. Would. Okay, so. Now, with that being said, we, we've got the, the whole makeup of going from Nebo Road all the way here, going to the underpath. Is there anything else that our viewing audience needs to know about this whole Highway 92 bypass? Any, any secrets that you guys are holding out as a city? I know you guys got some secrets around there that we don't, don't everybody don't know, but, but you guys only know that we're, I mean, one of which, will we be done tomorrow or will we be done with this whole project in 20, when I'm, I'm in my walker or? <laughs> Just help me out with this. <laughs> um, the project will be finished in, in December 2019. 2019. So there's a couple more wow. years to go wow. on the project. Wow. Um, it'll be a six lane divided project, it have landscape medians. Um, in the past, Georgia Department of Transportation didn't do a whole lot with pedestrians. Mm -hmm. This project will have sidewalks and um, pedestrian crossings throughout it. It'll also have sound walls. I, I mean, all the way from, from Nebo Road, all the way in, sidewalks? It should, wow. yes. Now, Michelle, on, we'll, um, I know at one point, and, and I don't remember if that, this is current to date, that there was a proposed plan that, to act, actually open up a portion of the road while it's still under construction for folks to drive on before it officially completely opens. Are they still planning to do that? No, they're okay. not. It'll open all at once. Okay. Now, that will not be the Nebo road section because they're about a year or two behind this this before it goes to construction so I'm, I'm hearing you correctly there's sidewalks from Nebo Road all the way in so we can actually walk now I wouldn't do that but we can actually walk on both sides of the streets yeah the walkers in the community wow. so so let's also talk about <laughs> down near the park Jesse Davis Park mm -hmm. and uh, the um, the um, Douglas Village how are we gonna make that that crossing there for those citizens that are be, that's in the heart of uh, of the north side. How would they make that type of a crossing? Are there any plans to get these guys across from one side to the other? You know. Um, originally, when we talked about the project, when this, it was still a city project, we had explored pedestrian bridges. Actually, uh, there were three of them, uh -huh. two downtown, one um, at the park. Mm -hmm. um, well, for those who visit Jesse Davis Park, you know the park and essentially is split in half. Yes. Um, so we're actually in the planning phases right now to uh, hire a consultant mm -hmm. to take a look at um, our overall scope of planning Jesse Davis Park. Okay. Um, really to address the changes that 92 and how it's affected the park. So we don't really know. We're looking for recommendations from that consultant. So they're probably gonna have to be some reconfiguring um, with fields, uh, pavilions, and a variety of other things at the park in order for us to make it adequate for uh, citizens who visit the park. And then from there, we'll address uh, pedestrian safety crossing over to right. get to the park. Right. Um, because you know, you got a, 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 a nice sized community on the opposite side of Jesse Davis Park right. that lives there that will probably be making that transition from one to the other now. When you've got uh, Douglas Village, they can just kind of walk you know, they're adjacent. Yeah, they're yeah. adjacent to it. So you, you're probably fine on that end, but more concerned with those that may cross it mm -hmm. from the other side, crossing a four lane or six lane, correct me? There, there is a pedestrian sidewalk and, uh, and pedestrian signals there at where you go on as. At Jesse Davis or at the. the well, ahead. at Malone there and then at also, which is on the, as you look at the park, it's on the west side. Okay. But there's also on the east side, there's um, mm -hmm. a crossing that goes into Brown Street near the uh, apartments and the housing there that's a pedestrian crossing. Got it. So, so we're going to look at some other means outside of a bridge because at one time it was a, the talk of a bridge right. and I, 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 it was a, I was trying to envision that. But um, 
Well, I think there, you know, there, there are mixed opinions about the bridge. Right. Um, what I've recommended to uh, the city council and the mayor is let's just take an overall comprehensive look before we decide on any one particular pedestrian uh, mode of access. Yeah. Because one of the things we don't want to do is that simultaneously we're working on a planning study for um, what you see along this entire route, uh, yes. basically, so we can... Um, from a, a business sense, perspective. From a business perspective. Yes, so yes, we can yes. dictate development yes. that comes along along the route. So one of the things I think would be um, detrimental to us is to put in place uh, some type of structure that would inhibit any potential type of commercial development for the neighborhood and the community. Well, I, I spoke with my councilman, uh, LaShawn Davis, I mean, LaShawn Burdanley and uh, Sam Davis, mm -hmm. and even Mayor Robinson about what is that overlay? Right. What do you guys envision? I've, right. expect, I've expressed my visions of what I see on the north side being the district commissioner for this particular area. But, you know, we all having these kind of conversations, but the question is, what, did, what is that? Right. And we can kind of do now and do the overlay so we can kind of decide on what we want versus what we'll get based on what may come just because of the traffic. Correct. And one of the things that we heard overall throughout that whole environmental process and whether or not some of those um, citizens are still here or not mm -hmm. is that they still wanted the north side to feel like a neighborhood, yes. but they wanted the commercial amenities. Yes. So that means no huge big box structures, no huge um, you know, structures that would impede that neighborhood feel. So I think that that, you know, that warrants some conversations. Yes, that was back in 2009 and 10. Yes. So now it's 2000. And, you know, 17. So what do uh, what does the neighborhood want today? So you guys are doing studies. You yes. guys are having conversations yes. uh, and with the county, yes. you know, to kind of have that conversation because it's it's important that we get what we think this community should look like and be in the in the up and coming future right. versus uh, those that may come through and dictate that because we never had a plan. Correct. Mm -hmm. So it's good that yes. you guys are having that kind of conversation. So good. So. When would that overlay, when would that project, part of the project be done? Would it be done after the project is completed or are we gonna be doing it simultaneously while we're going through the project? Well, the, we uh, are gonna work to select the parks planning uh, consultant um, actually on the 31st of August. Okay. So that process will probably take us about six to nine months. And that's just the park side that's of it. That's just the park side of it. Um, and the next couple weeks, we will work to um, get the planning company for uh, just the area, the corridor area for, to deal with the zoning and the development codes, we met with, um, I think it was eight firms who put in their intent to submit a bid to us um, to look at that, over, like you said, an overlay, a planning yes. district. Yes. Um, I, I view that process taking about 18 months because by the time you get community you input. Train, I'm sorry, you hear our train coming? Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> By the, by the time you get community input, um, by the time you get staff saying how this actually even yes. works or fits into what yes. we're doing, mm -hmm. and then come up with a concept that everybody can feel like they can live with, mm -hmm. I, I'm thinking it's an 18-month process Got from it. start okay. to finish. Okay, okay. So it'll go hand in glove. And, and the question is kind of when you guys can kind of have that deep conversation and, and find that resolution of this is what we want and this is kind of how we envision the north side here in the, in the up and coming future. Correct, because the citizens may come out and say, you know, they want X, right. but staff may come back. Michelle may say, okay, our zoning does not fit with this. Right. So those conversations had to have to be had with the consultants for them to design that in. And it has to be something that the body, the elected officials can buy into. And the community will Correct. buy into. So Correct. we got to get these guys to buy into it because this is, I mean, this is where I live. Right. You know, so I want to make sure I have a say in this. And at least buy in. I may my, might not buy into 100% of what we're all talking about, right. but at least we want to buy in from the community as well. Though, correct, so. correct. Because you may say, hey, I, I, you know, I want a, a good balance between residential and commercial. Yes. Or yes. there may be some out there who say we got enough, you know, residential. Yes. It's just, you know, it's yes. a lot of conversations we have to have. Well, I, I know you, while we're having this conversation, there's a, we, we did some overviews with the uh, drone that these guys will be looking at and they'll get a chance to see kind of that the park layout and get an overview of that park layout. Then they can get a chance to see the whole uh, coming up Brown Street look and then look at the whole makeup of when it goes through an underpath on 92 going all the way up to, to, to uh, I-20. So mm -hmm. let's do this. Great conversation. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's kind of end this conversation on a great note, and we're going to go uh, maybe where it comes back into Fairburn Road okay. um, and getting to 20, so we can get all this traffic from Paulden County through Douglasville to 20, and that's the goal here, to get them to the mall, to get them to 20, and that way they can come through our town and be quickly in and out, right?
So let's take let's make one more stop, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. We're gonna take one more stop and we're gonna go and find out kind of where this thing will resolve, where it will end, and we'll all come together and they'll get the whole full picture of these four phase projects, I guess, correct? Michelle, that's correct. good. Okay. Yes. So let's take another little stroll again, and I guess we'll stroll uh, in uh, this direction, I guess. Okay. <laughs> And then we'll kind of have another conversation once we get up here about Big Lots and talk about how great this thing really is. Okay now, Michelle, you're the expert at this. So with that, we're now at the finishing or the stopping point where this whole project comes together. This is, I'm assuming, let's call it phase three. Okay, phase three where it kind of connects with uh, Fairburn Road. Talk about that. I mean, we, we, we came all the way from Nebo Road. We're now here on Fairburn Road where this project kind of comes together and get everybody to 20. Okay, um, actually, we are on the s south side of the railroad tracks and okay. this follows an alignment that is North Hospital Drive. And then it comes behind the CVS and ties in with uh, Fairburn Road. Mm -hmm. And it would take you directly to I-20. This is actually, the railroad is phase one. And the reason they have these phases is because they want them to start phase one will take the longest. Okay. Phase two and three will, uh, you know, take less time so that when everything opens to traffic, it opens all at the same time. Got it. Because the railroad phase is about 36 months and the rest of them are shorter. And so, you did state earlier that this, when, the, when the project is completed, it'll open. Yes, Not, the whole thing will open okay. to traffic at the same time. Got it. And, and will, the, will it be still four lanes, six lanes all the way through, or kind of give everybody the, 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 the lineage of what that, how many um, lanes will there be coming all the way through? It'll be six lanes all the way through with landscape medium and sidewalks. And sidewalks. Pedestrian crossings and mm -hmm. sound walls in the Almost residential Almost like where area. we're standing now, I guess. So this, mm -hmm. this is actually the road. I can kind of, I can kind of see it. Yeah. Can you can you see that? I mean, yeah, you can actually envision this thing like this is this is it. Yeah, just a few months ago, this wasn't here. No, exactly, right. exactly. Because back here, uh, we had um, the big lots. Mm -hmm. We had the uh, a couple of the a whole little shopping plaza that was back there, and now it's traffic. Yes. Wow. Anything you want to add to that, Marsh? I mean, um, I, you know, it, it seems to appear that it's taken a long time, but I, I think that when people kind of look at the whole scope of the project and, and see everything that goes in it and what has to get done and just, you know, all the hands that really have to shake, I would say it's it's not taken as long as, as probably can, people can envision. The long part was way back when, when you yes. guys were working yes. on it, getting it just kickstarted. Th yes. This is not as long as, as probably most projects. So how much more, if any, do the city of Douglasville and even the county, which I don't think the county has any financial investments there, but is there any other financial investment that's coming from the city? I mean, right now, I think we're done. I know when I left, we had to roughly a $3 million p and &E that we did. Is there any additional cost that the city may incur to get this project completed? I mean, because you got, I mean, we got the roads, we got the poles and stuff that's gonna be coming up. We got a lot of other things gonna happen. Is that out of all that $111 million that's coming from um, the Federal Highway Commission and or GDOT and everywhere else. Is, is that all of that money and we're done? Or the city got some other, you know, kind of cost that they're gonna incur yeah. that just unknown that will be there? I don't necessarily know if it's unknown, but Michelle could probably speak to the specifics of each of these, but there'll be some agreements that we have with GDOT on maintenance. Uh -huh. So the city will have to incur the cost of maintenance of those things along the route. And then there'll probably be some, you know, maybe some upgrades, like Michelle was saying with uh, landscape medians. You know, mm -hmm. there may be a request, as you know, if you go down certain places, yes. a Cobb and Gwinnett, yes. where it's there's an additional beautification it's, element. Yes. And typically those are the responsibility of the community and GDOT just signs an agreement with that community to do those things. You know, the GDOT's not gonna go out and plant the expansive things. Exactly. Uh, they're gonna rely on the, the uh, community to do that. They're gonna do just enough, but right. you gotta make it, be you gotta beautify it yourself Correct. as a community. Now, now, one last thing, when we get down to the bridge, is, is there gonna be any lighting that's gonna come along with this? part of this project that has nothing to do with this particular Highway 92 bypass project when it comes to the, when we get down to the bridge itself of I-20, the bridge, is that, is there any lighting parts of this whole $111 million? Well, th this project will have lighting along the corridor. Okay. It, 
of this corridor only. Yes. Now, if yes. there's additional lighting, you would have to. We would no, have I'm to only work it of this, out. The highway 90 bypass. So, see, people are asking about how dark it is on the bridge and all that. So I'm just wondering, will that also be a part of connecting the, the lighting project part of this whole uh, um, not bypass? Not to my knowledge. The project ends here at the racetrack in Durley Lane. Oh, got you. Okay, okay. so. Anything okay. up there would be separate, Got you. a separate okay. project. Got you. So, so w this is the, the, the final stop is where we yes. are. And then from that point, you know, even though we just recently did the bridge, I mean, a few years ago. So right. that has nothing to do with the Highway 92 bypass. Right. Can I get you guys just kind of share with me anything that you might want to, in closing, say to our uh, District Dialogue family about the Highway 92 bypass? I mean, uh, how, how you felt about the process, how long it's taken. We already talked about the actual final date when we can kind of, you know, place our cars on this road and, and travel this road and get this traffic from Paulding County all the way to 20. So any closing remarks? Well, Shelly, just. Um, I think that we had great partners in this. I think Congressman Scott, the city council. Big kudos to, to, to Georgia Department Scott, yes. of Transportation yes. and their commissioners uh, really helped move this project along. It was a really joint effort also with the county. Mm -hmm. So I think that working together as a team, that was really helpful. Great. I, I would say uh, kudos on that. Um, I would just say, Commissioner, I would agree with Michelle, and along with that is, you know, just to keep up the momentum of collaboration. And, yes. and I know that, you know, I guess the overwhelming majority of your district is within the city. Yes. So as we go yes. through these planning processes, yes. so I would, you know, urge your constituents to come out, even though they're city projects, I mean, right. they're your interest. So yes. um, continue to have the collaboration on the uh, local level, the federal and the state level. And I think that in the end, um, the city, mm -hmm. your district specifically yes. will yes. all benefit from that. Absolutely. And we got to continue this type of dialogue mm -hmm. and have open, you know, transparency when it comes to these types of projects, how what's being spent, how well the project is going. And if there's an additional cost, what is what are those costs and all those kind of great things. So I think this is actually great dialogue. So I appreciate you guys for spending your 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 after your, or morning with me to kind of pull this thing off. So thank you to you guys. And the uh, only thing I'll say at this point, Thank you for tuning in to District Dialogue. This has been a nice journey of the Highway 92 bypass. Uh, tune in to some great conversation, some great dialogue, and in the end, you'll see how this project actually ends. And in closing, tell us once again the actual, hopefully, opening date of this Highway 92 bypass project. December 2019. December 2019, that's the actual date. Now, it could vary based on the mere fact of weather. <laughs> things we can't control but at the end of the day I think this is a great project and I'm glad to see this infrastructure come on the north side because now we've got the infrastructure that will hopefully give us the things that we need and 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 can flourish on the north side so I think this is a, this is a great a great thing a great project thank you guys again thank you for listening and tuning into district dialogue and until next time enjoy your day